scroll scope by Ardura. It's a free VST. It's an oscilloscope. So first we got to send it something. Let's send it this uh, synthesizer here. So now that's coming into the scope. This is what it looks like. That's the gist of the plugin. Cool things that this oscilloscope does. Uh, it does really well with the really long stuff. Uh, if we make this a really long. So I like, oh, oh, oh. Well, it's never done that before. Uh, let's restart. Okay, we're back. I've never had it crash the system before, so that's new. Uh, that did not happen before. It is quite buggy. It's in active development. It's maintained by one person. So just be aware of that. But one of the things I like it for is when it, you can give it a very long window when you're looking at things. You can zoom in real close or you can zoom out. And you can see like compression curves and things and it, it does really well with this. So I actually like using it when I'm trying to show the effects on a waveform over time. Like if you're messing with the compressor, you can easily see that here. Uh, there are a few settings. You could control the gain. It is basically a zoom, a vertical zoom on how things are. It does not actually affect uh, the zoom uh, or the playback. It just is a visual thing. Bigger now. Make it smaller. I, I wish this was bigger. Like, I wish you could go up to like 32 plus minus, you know, just really blow it up. Um, it is not resizable. I constantly find myself trying to resize it. You can't resize it. Uh, you've seen the zoom level, but there's this other feature here called uh, skip and skip almost has a similar thing. It skips some of the samples from what I understand. If you hover over something, it'll, it'll tell you how many samples are skipped before reading a value. And it's got an interesting property. If you like have a really small window, it looks like it's flying by, right? Almost like a speed control in a way as well. I tend to only touch this if, if things are getting weird. Um, you could toggle the waveform views and, uh, on how the order these are. We will get to that here in a second. I first want to cover the sync. So there's this sync option, which will sync it to the beat. So say I want to inspect this kick on every single hit. I could get rid of this, uh, the synth. Let's say we don't want to see that. We want to see this kick hit. We want to see it hit the same way every time and we could compare it to like a bass or something uh, at the same time. And if it doesn't work normally, you go to like alt sync. And there you go. Now it's kind of moving according to our window and things are just a bit weird. So I'm going to hit the uh, refresh interval sync and this tends to line it up. I'm also going to flip it and let's see if we can dial this in. There we go. All right, so the magic settings I settled on here were having both the syncs on at the same time. I got no idea why that works, but that's what worked. You can click this, it refreshes the interval, and this looks like a button, but if you click and try to type, it doesn't do anything, and I'm not sure what this does at all. Uh, it's a weird, a weird thing here. Uh, there is a flip control that flips the direction the thing is coming from, and then you control like visually. <laughs> Fill option, which I'm pretty sure doesn't do anything in the oscilloscope mode. I'm not entirely sure. There is a stereo view. Ah, this is a good demo. So, in the stereo mode, um, it will show you the zooming feature it has. So, if your signal is small or big, it auto scales. I really wish this was a toggle you could turn off and you could just control the scaling with this because it makes it so that when you have a small signal, this zooms in more. And when you have a large signal, it zooms out and you can see our signal varies within the window. So it's constantly zooming in and out and it's just not, it's, it's not helpful. That's why it keeps doing this up and down. It's going from zero to when the kick shows up. And so we zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. And just don't work very well. Uh, but that that is something small that I wish would change. Uh, but yeah, it scales its visual element according to the loudest thing currently on the oscilloscope screen. So that is something that with shorter intervals becomes more and more of an issue. There is an analysis. You can do an FFT on this thing and look at this spectrum. 
You can fill the lines of the spectrum. You can change it to a bar mode. <laughs> Get rid of the guides if you're a maniac and want a clean screen. This would be so fantastic if you could get a clean full screen, hide the controls, and just get a super clean, just visual only. Oh my gosh, it'd be so beautiful. But it gets better yet. So we can turn off uh, the kit coming in here and say I want to view multiple channels at the same time, compare the kick with a base. So we have this, um, let's see, we've got a pluck layer here. Where's our base? Bases are typically black. So I've got these bases here, right? So which one's our base base? So this is the sub base. So let's take the sub base. I'm gonna shift click to side chain it to this channel. And I'll come over here to the kick and I will side chain that one. And what the heck, we'll grab the snare too. So there are three things side chained to this. Now I can go into the cog, go to the processing tab, this like area processing. And then I have my inputs, and I could choose for the first input to be the kick. I could choose the second one to be the sub bass, and the last one I can choose to be the snare. I don't know if I can rename these. Be awful nice if I could. So these are all coming in, and now I can go in here and choose to see the first one, which is labeled as in. Can you rename this? Yeah, yeah I don't know if you can rename it. It'd be really nice. I can choose to view two. So now this is the kick in the sub base, we'll move this out of the way. And we'll also like zoom in and we can do our double sync technique. But now we can look at how And that's kind of a cool thing. It's still kind of glitchy, so I don't typically grab it for this reason. There are other oscilloscopes that are more stable that will do this but it is a cool thing that's in here and it might work really good in a different DAW. Um, again, it's been maintained by just one person. Um, I really like it for this ability to zoom way out and look at things. And we could turn on our snare now. Let's, uh, what's this, snare's on that one. Let's take a look, let's just turn on the next channel. And now we can choose uh, to change how it's being drawn. But now we could change toggle and it changes what waveform is on the top. This makes seeing the phase relationships a heck of a lot easier. So again, yeah, you could toggle the order that they're drawn on so you can get a better look at them. Currently, you cannot zoom in with any sort of keyboard command, but you can, uh, oh wait, maybe you can. Nope, nope, you can't. Shift seems to do something though. So to show you where it's at, it did, they got an update like two weeks ago that added this stereo view. So things are happening. Oh, I was hoping this would kind of happen. So occasionally you get this glitch where the stereo is just randomly shifted way up. <laughs> And it's just weird as heck. And I believe if you open and close it, it fixes it. So it's kind of a bit of a like, oh, oh yeah. And it, it must be part of the auto, the auto zoom feature. They're somehow linked. They've got to be tied together somehow. And sometimes they just don't trigger. So anyways, that's Scrolloscope. I know it looks a little bit like a mess in the sense that there's quite a few bugs and weird things and it's, it's very much in the works. I view it more as in the beta than officially released and is guaranteed to be stable. Again, it's free and it's just a passion project by one person. Uh, let's go to the database here. So this is it in the database. Um, this is in the oscilloscope database, but it is also in the free database. There will be a link to this that kind of goes over its, its different statistics. And you can go to download on the developer site. And this is the site where you'll get it. They cover it in its current progress. And then you could come over to releases. And then you'll come in here and go to the Windows build or whatever, whatever build you're on, uh, whatever OS you have. And they do have others uh, you could check out. Uh, but this is just the one, this is just for scroll, scroll scope. Uh, it's surprisingly, despite its sort of glitchy nature I'm constantly fighting, it is surprisingly helpful.
the the ability to just zoom way out and have it roll like that is something that it just does really well and it's become something I, I actually really like when I'm educating. The only drawback that I sometimes find myself facing is this zoom feature, this auto zooming thing totally bites me when I'm trying to demonstrate changes in level because it makes it really hard when the graph just automatically changes the size. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Again, it's totally free. So just keep that in mind uh, before you go um, pointing out like flaws and things. It's a free thing maintained by one person and I personally really like this tool despite some of its drawbacks. Go download it and have a blessed day.